Happy holidays uh, from the Confluence Fly Shop in Bellingham, Washington. I'm Scott Willison, the owner, and we are going to be tying a winter steelhead fly today. Uh, this one is called the Flamingo Kid. Uh, you'll see kind of because of the, the coloration and everything, um, and I just thought I'd name it after kind of a obscure 1984 movie with Matt Dillon um, based on that. Anyway, uh, I'm starting out with a 20 millimeter uh, OPST intruder shank. Uh, the intruder shanks have a return loop on them, so they're a great choice if you're going to be working with uh, uh, lead eyes or brass eyes of any sort. Um, I am putting that into my OPST shank chuck tool. Um, kind of works like a you put in a drill bit. Just make sure that's in there nice and tight. Uh, if you tie on a lot of shanks, this is a, a great tool to use. Um, it's going to save the jaws of your vise. Um, so it is worth the 50 bucks it'll cost you to get one of these. Um, I am also going to start the fly with 140 denier thread, fluorescent pink uh, ultra thread. A fairly strong thread. And we'll start up toward the eye of the shank and then wrap back to give ourselves a nice little thread base. And then I'm going to cut off a length of, uh, this is just 30 pound uh, Berkeley Fireline. You could use intruder wire, you could use mono. I just happen to have this lying around this morning. Some people like to wait and put their hook on at the end. I, I kind of like to just get it over with. You just got to be really careful not to hook yourself on it. So I just put that loop through the eye like so. And then I want this trailing back just far enough to uh, prevent it from fouling with the material. And, you know give myself enough room if I need to take the hook out and replace it if it got dull. Um, if you do a couple loose wraps you can kind of pull on the tag ends here and size it accordingly. I think we're good. I'm going to bind that down. Wrap up a little ways toward the eye and then I'm going to go ahead and pull the ends back over there. This is an important step to prevent that trailing hook wire from slipping out. And then we're going to go ahead and add our eyes. This isn't going to be a super, super heavy pattern, uh, but we're going to use uh, these extra small lead eyes here. And I'm actually going to put those on the underside of the shank. Some people put these on at the end, some people put them on at the beginning. I, I like putting them on first. It gives me a good spatial reference to let me know where I need to stop with everything else. And we're just doing tight figure eight wraps to get those on. Great thing about these intruder shanks, it's got a wide enough base you're tying on. Those aren't really going to slip around the shank at all. Okay. Next we're going to do a rear body of uh, some um, fluorescent orange diamond braid. These pinks and oranges and whites, um, great uh, early winter steelhead pattern. This is kind of a smaller pattern. Uh, this color combo, I, I like it and everything from gin clear water to uh, kind of that smoky smoky green when the river is dropping. So we'll tie that in about three quarters of the way up the shank and then wrap back over it. That'll give us a fairly smooth underbody. And we'll get some tight wraps going there. Yeah, that should should be good. Okay, next we are going to 
make a dubbing loop. And this is going to be the hardest part of the fly there. We're going to do a real fancy composite loop collar on this thing. And take my favorite little dubbing spinner and insert it in there. And then we'll go ahead and uh, prepare our composite loop here. So we're going to use some fluorescent UV pink ice dub as kind of our base. And I'm just going to lay this out on the card here so y'all can get a, a little better picture of what I'm doing. I've got just two fairly sparse sections of um, pink ice dub. Uh, then I've got some hot pink Arctic Fox. We're going to cut a little section, about a pencil thickness of this. And this is really important. You need to use, use your finger and thumbnail to get out a lot of that that extra guard here. If it's too fluffy, it, it just ends up being a real mess when you try to tie with it. So I think we're pretty good there. And then I'm going to even up those butt ends. Kind of do my best to spread that out. And then we're going to Lay that out evenly along one half of my ice dub there. Um, next, we're going to incorporate a little flash into that. I've chosen the Pearl Baitfish, Baitfish Emulator Flash. Great stuff to work with. So, cut a little bit of that off the core. I like to leave this a little bit longer than the... Uh, Than the fox. And we'll spread that out evenly along it there. And then we're going to put the rest of our ice dub on top of it. And if all goes well, you can usually just pick the whole thing right up there and that ice tub kind of glues it together. So I'll insert that into the dubbing loop there. My bait fish emulator is going to hang out a little bit uh, over the other end. I want just the butt ends of that Arctic Fox in there so they don't slip out, but they're not going to create a lot of bulk. And then we are just going to spin that out and then really comb out any of the, the excess. Normally when I tie, I like to have a glass of water or something handy and I can wet this down and really train those fibers back. I overlooked that this morning but no worries I think we'll be able to pull it off here. So I've got that nice and combed out and then we're gonna wrap this just like we would a hackle and again during this process really be mindful of that hook back there if you've chosen to Put it in. This is this is where things go bad if you're not careful. All right. This is going to help give give this fly some shoulders, so that everything doesn't just uh, collapse in the water. Cut off the rest of our dubbing loop there. Now we're going to do uh, kind of a shrimp pink marabou for the collar. Make sure I've got all my fox and my composite loop sweeping back. And then we're going to strip off a bunch of this fluffy stuff that we don't need at the base of the feather. Sweep some of those hackles back. 
the fibers back. And then we're leaving just a little nub there for the tip. Give us something secure to tie in. And then we will go ahead and train those fibers back. Really don't want a whole ton of marabou on here. Two to three wraps is more than sufficient. And a little trick too, I don't know if you could see what I'm doing here, but I'm kind of planning ahead and stripping away the, the fiber so that when I do reach the point of tying this down, I'm just tying down on bare stem. I don't have a whole bunch of errant fibers that are ending up all over the place. So there we have our, our collar. Next, we're going to liven this thing up here with some uh, shrimp pink grizzly flutter legs. I'm going to do one long strand. side there. Yeah. Kind of try to keep those fibers out of the way there. And I like to just fold those around the thread, pull pretty tightly, and then take some very tight wraps in front of them and that will lock these into place so they don't slip out. Alright, I think we are good there. And lastly, we're going to finish off the fly. I've got a, a hot pink uh, schloppen feather that we're going to put a nice neat little collar on here. So you'll notice I tied the marabou in by the tip. I'm going to tie this in by the, the butt of the, the feather there. And I've got just a little bit of exposed stem to do that. in the place and then again less is more I'm gonna get two two to three wraps out of this make sure I don't trap those those rubber legs in there Give her one more wrap here. And then we're tying that down behind the lead eyes. Sweep everything back. And we'll get our little whip finisher out to finish that off. Great winter steelhead fly for all seasons, but I really like this early in the season when sometimes you'll get low clear water and water's real cold. This is not a super big pattern in the world of modern steelhead patterns. I'm going to trim those legs there. Uh, ultimately, I don't want them all the same length, so I usually end up with kind of one long one, one short one per side, and those are going to move them wiggle, do all kinds of crazy stuff in the water, but uh, 
there you have it, the Flamingo Kid. Thanks for watching, and please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.